Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to Stretch Fear Lounge. I'm your host, uh, Bill Whittle, and uh, it's great to have you back uh, here. Actually, uh, you probably never went anywhere. I'm the one who left, but in any event, uh, it's good to be back. I feel especially bad about last week because I had uh, just been blown out, tired on Wednesday, tried to move it to Thursday, and then I just got stuck in the proverbial traffic, and uh, so sorry about that, but we're back. Um, and it is the 16th of January, 2019, and still no jetpacks. I'm, I'm very um, I'm bitterly disappointed is, is what I am. Um, hope everybody's been well, and uh, it's good to be here. Um, don't have a whole lot of uh, uh, news. It's uh, super interesting. Um, I did uh, go and talk to... Um, I talked about the uh, Aurora Project thing to a, a group of little old ladies... Um, and, uh, and, and they were the sweetest, the littlest and the oldest ladies I've ever, ever spoken in front of. And it was, you know, it's not a super wealthy crowd. Um, but we had our, uh, little donation envelopes and, um, I mean, really, really, really old ladies, lovely, lovely people, but uh, honestly, and maybe 35 of them. And out of those 35, uh, uh little old ladies, we got uh, 23 donation envelopes, and um, and one of them was for $3, which I know some people are disappointed by or mock or disdain, but for me, I was just as touched by that as I could be, but it turned into uh, $709, uh, so e even... Um, I cannot imagine a more unlikely group of people to go and ask uh, for... Um, money for something like uh, video game messaging through uh, 3D graphics, but for um, for that to be, you know, 60%, 65, 70% um, of uh, of the total number of people there actually getting out and writing a check was really, uh, really nice. So we'll try that again with some uh, some other people in the near future and make some uh, some deposits and. Uh, Great. Uh, they're actually not from Pasadena. Uh, they're from, uh, <laughs> took me a second, sorry, a little slow on the uptake. Uh, they're lovely, lovely, lovely people from Canoga Park. And I just couldn't have had a better time. And I find the, the, the less I talk about the details of what I want to do, the, the better the message gets. So uh, there we go. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, got run over by a car yesterday. That was exciting. Um, I went out to get uh, some some food. It was raining in L.A. and and when it rains in L.A., people are well. They just don't they just don't know what to do. Um, so uh, I was uh, went out to get some some food afterwards. It was late at night and it was uh, well, it was about eight thirty, I guess. Uh, late rain in L.A. and this particular place I wanted to pick up the food was at um, was at uh, Ventura Boulevard. And there was no parking anywhere. I mean, it was there was no parking for two blocks, three blocks in, in either location. So after driving around for a while, I took a right and headed up the hills towards the uh, Santa Monica Mountains there. You know, one side of Ventura Boulevard, uh, the um, south side is uh, uh, very hilly. And so I turned up the hill, found a little uh, residential neighborhood, parked pretty close to Ventura Boulevard, get out of the car, got my little umbrella, and I'm walking down the hill. So I'm coming down this hill like this, and Ventura Boulevard is going this way. And I get to the to the stoplight, and I hit the crosswalk uh, button. And um, and that little spidey sense just went off. Just said, "Be careful crossing the street. You know it's wet out there, and uh, you know sometimes people just are not able to stop their cars uh, the way." Um, that they would under normal circumstances. So uh, the the walk light went on and the green light came. And so people, there's traffic coming down the hill from behind me, potential traffic, but the main traffic is on the cross streets on Ventura Boulevard. I'd look to the left. Is that car going to stop? Absolutely. What about to the right? Yes, that car's already stopped. What about that car coming down the hill behind me? Fine. He's fine. He sees me. He's turning. He's turning. He's turning. He's getting closer. He's getting closer. He's getting closer. He's getting, Jesus Christ, this guy's going to hit me. Um, and I just took a step back. And um, uh, and I discovered some interesting things that I didn't know about. Uh, I discovered that you can have your entire front of your foot run over by um, by a Toyota to the point. I don't mean like just nudged. 
I mean, like, run over uh, so that the car goes boom, boom, like that, uh, by running over your foot. Um, and that hurts a bit. Uh, and the guy um, was, you know, he was as mortified as I would be if, if it were me. He just didn't see me, um, I guess. He just didn't see me. But I saw him. Otherwise, uh, the story could have been a little more uh, amusing. Um, but... Um, yeah, the car ran right over my the, the front half of my right foot, and um, and it hurt quite a bit. But it didn't hurt bad enough for me to cry or anything, and I just kept doing the Ron Swanson, started limping, you know. And um, and the guy said, oh, man, why, why are you okay? I said, yeah, you, you just ran over my foot. That was kind of fun. He says, oh, dude, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Are you okay? I said, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. And and, and he you know, kept, kept stuck in the street long enough uh, to... Um, to make sure that I actually, you know, was not going to go down, and I just, <laughs> just limped down the sidewalk to the Berry place, and uh, I remember clearly remember thinking, um, better put some weight on it now because if it's broken and numb, you'll know it now. Uh, but um, it just over the course of the next half hour, it just started hurting less and less and less, and I forgot all about it. Um, I got home and, and told Natasha about it. And I took off my uh, I took off my sock, and like um, so. If this is my uh, foot, and it is, except it's my hand. There's like a diagonal line that goes like you know like this, where you can see that the that the tire of the car ran over part of the uh, the first toe and just pretty much all of the big toe, and um, and it was uh, it was um, pretty red, but that's about it. Nothing else happened. Uh, so that was fun. It's just um, important uh, to be careful, you know. I never forget this as long as I live. I was uh, I was in driver's ed in Coral Gables High School in 1976, and we were we had a a bunch of donated cars, and we were learning how to drive in the big, big, big parking lot out back of the school. And they had a driver's ed instructor named uh, Mr. Young. Was Yanagi, Mr. Yanagito, I think, little, little uh, Italian guy, very small and very very funny, and um, and he he taught me two lessons that I that I have not uh, forgotten. One of them was, uh, he said, um, when you come to a stop sign, that means stop. It doesn't mean slow down. And he said, um, so if I was uh, to walk up with you, and start bashing you over the head with this baseball bat, which he kept by his desk. And started just bashing you, bashing you on the head, and just kept hitting you repeatedly, repeatedly, and repeatedly. And you yelled, stop, stop, stop. How would you feel if I just slowed down? And I thought, wow, man, that's memorable. And then, um, and the other thing he said that I that I never forgot, we were, we were doing some kind of exercise, and he was saying, you just always have to assume that that person is going to do the wrong thing, because otherwise your headstone will read, he was right. Uh, and I've had that experience in airplanes, too. You know, clear for takeoff, and you look off to the left, and there's somebody about to land on you, and, you know, clear to land, and you look off to the to the right, and there's somebody who's, like, merging into, uh, you know, the same uh, four dimensions that you want to be in. Um, and it's just a very good habit um, to uh, just, you know, drive um, and walk and live uh, defensively. Just assume that that this person's going to do something stupid and you're and you'll live well, generally speaking a lot longer unless they do something really stupid or you do something stupid too that's always always known to happen but i do remember um i do remember uh when the guy <laughs> ran over my foot and the car went tonk tonk uh i remember thinking like you know jesus man what's the matter with you and then i immediately thought of all the times that I've just plain, it's not a lot of times, but it's enough times to know uh, that um, you just sometimes you just don't see things. It's just it, you just make a mistake. Um, so uh, that's our little civics lesson for the day today. Um, we did have a very uh, interesting uh, couple of days, uh, and that is because we brought. When I say we, I mean I. Um, brought Mr. Scott out from uh, Scott Ott out from Texas. He spent two or three days here. Uh, Scott 
uh, I've been working with on air since 2008, and I suppose most people know he's um, just the best person I know, unless he's here. And if he's here, which I doubt, but if he is here, please identify yourself, Scott. In which case, I'll go back to uh, talking much the way you, you know that I, that I normally should. Um, but uh, he came out for a couple days, and I had no idea that he'd known so much about running a business and, and fundraising and management and task completion and all of that stuff. Uh, and we just had a great time. Went up to a jazz club with Natasha on, um, when he got here on Sunday night. And we got more work done on Monday than I've done in this office in two months. And he's um, also been um, helping uh, poor, incredibly, unbelievably loyal and um, hardworking uh, Shelly, who's been, who's been just, you know, uh, manning the fire hoses here and so things are going on really well and we have an interesting um, set of uh, ideas about about what we're going to do I'd really like to basically get him to you know kind of run the company because somebody ought to do it and uh, it's nice to talk about to the strata launders because it's uh, you know it's a it's pretty much the in crowd um, and we're trying to think about what we wanted to do and when Scott came to talk about kind of new directions and just sort of getting this thing off on the right foot, uh, his first words out of his mouth were, you know, love the members. And I thought, yeah, that's that's really pretty much true. So um, after 10 years of doing this and something close to 100 million views, it's not so much that I, that I need the views anymore. I just, <laughs> you know, if we're going to keep the electricity on here, I need people to pay for the views. And so we ran into the problem that we have with this company, which is we have a membership-based uh, business model, and the goal of the membership is to make sure that everything gets free, seen by as many people as possible for free. Um, and that is a little bit um, uh, contradictory, but we came up with what I thought was a, just a fantastic solution, and, and it was mostly Scott's idea. Uh, so... Um, what we're going to be doing basically is that we're going to uh, billwhittle.com is going to be essentially be and he got this idea from uh, Dave Rubin this is what we're talking about doing anyway it's going to be um the whole site is going to be members only and uh if you're not a member then uh, at Dave Rubin's site you go to Dave Rubin's splash page and it says uh, become a, a member or view and if you go to view you go um uh you go to his YouTube page and you see all of the videos he has at YouTube. But here's what we decided to do, and I think this is actually a really, really, really great idea because I think it works on both sides of the equation. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to um, continue to do at least 10 shows a week, five right angles and five Bill Little Nows. And those are generally running about 15 minutes, 12, uh, generally 15 to 20 minutes. And those will be available uh, for you to view as a member. Uh, and if you're not a member, what you will go get is you will get uh, directed to the YouTube page. And this is the part that's actually brilliant, I think. Um, Scott did a test cut down of a 15-minute segment, cut it down to three minutes, put a little music underneath it, and some flash titles on, 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 you know, on the points. And so what he ended up doing was he ended up taking uh, a 15-minute show with a fairly detailed... Um, uh, you know, 15-minute 15, 15 show the fairly detailed analysis. He pulled the best, um, the best three minutes of the answer out there, and that's going to be available to everybody uh, for free. And a three-minute show will do better business on YouTube than a 15-minute show. Um, so, uh, at the same time, um, what it does is uh, we. Um, we basically say here's the here's the best of the stuff and here's the, the the primary message from the content from the right angle and from this and that and and uh, and that gets shared wide because it's shorter it's a little more manageable and at the same time um, you actually get something you know for your membership you get the you get the the whole you get the you know the whole thought processes processes um, and the one that I thought was very interesting lately on Bill Whittle now was the one about the national parks where. Um, Scott challenged me on something, and I came up with an answer. And then, as I thought about it more, I changed my mind. And um, and that kind of thing is fun to see. So that's that's real easy to do. Scott also had some interesting ideas about things like a right angle, for example. 
Uh, right angle is a three-panel show, and right angle is a three-panel show because uh, Trifecta was a three-panel show, and Trifecta was a three-panel show because they were showing off their technology in 2008 where we were doing three live streams in little boxes. And what Scott pointed out was uh, right angle, there's no reason why it has to be in three boxes. In other words, you shouldn't have to be... Um, looking at Steve and Scott while I'm talking or looking at uh, me and Scott while Steve's talking or, or whatever. And so um, we're going to recut that show and it'll give it a lot more visual um, uh, dynamics and we'll do some pull-ups too. You know, we'll actually edit for content if you can imagine such a thing. Um, and uh, that should make it a lot more interesting. Um and I think that that kind of thing is is just you know with really brilliant. So there's that. Uh, we want to try and improve the the quality of the of the actual video, video image coming out. Um, this is this is pretty good the way it is. Uh, Bill Whittle now is shot just over there. In fact, since it's lit, um, there you go. Um, so uh, as you can see from this um, extremely uh, valuable setup here. Um, uh, Bill Whittle now is shot in front of a, a TV screen, um, and that's nice because I can change the background, but it does two things. Um, it, uh, it limits the size of the frame. In other words, I have to have the camera. You can see the camera right there kind of on the tripod behind the lights. It means the camera has to be close enough to get me, because if the camera's any further back on a wider shot, um, we see the edges of the TV screen. Um, and the other thing, and the, and the much more um, annoying, why can't I get there? There we go. And the much more annoying thing about this setup is, is that because it's a TV screen, you can actually see it from here. Those two lights have to be up really high because if they're any lower, um, then uh, they get the reflection on the TV screen comes right back at them. So, um, in the, the fullness of time, hopefully not too long, the next, uh, I don't know, somewhere in a month or so, hopefully, we're going to just take that TV screen down. We're going to put a big Bill Whittle now on the wall, make it a practical set like they have over at Daily Wire, which we went to visit. Uh, to visit. Jeremy uh, Boring had, uh, had took time out and had Scott and I over there. And, um, and the quality of the lighting uh, is fantastic on Daily Wire, and the practical sets, you know, the, the actual physical sets means that you can... Um, come back uh, further, and so if we had a practical, um, you know, Bill Whittle now on the wall back there in the alcove there, um, we could actually shoot it uh, like the firewall, shoot it at 4K, um, and shoot a 4K wide shot where you'd see some lights in the desk and everything and the practical thing, and then we could go in and do a digital push to what was approximately the same shot as we have now on Bill Whittle now, but... Um, because it's shooting 4K and you're outputting it either 720 or 1080, you don't lose any resolution. And we just think that would look much better. Uh, so um, we're all uh, real excited about that. And, uh, and um, Scott uh, really, really was just extraordinary. Uh, we had a great time, went up to Vibrato Jazz Club and, and listened to some jazz music and Tosh and Scott and I and had ourselves just a dandy time. Uh, so, um, I am looking forward uh, to, um, you know, uh, implementing these changes, but we'll, we're not going to tell you when until we're ready to do them because that would be nuts. Okay, um, so um, I'm going to uh, chew through a couple questions here. Uh, I know uh, Eric and Blake said that it has to be a long one because uh, I missed last week and this has to be penance and... I think it's pretty clear by now that most everything I do is 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 intended in one way or another to 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 make sure Eric is happy. Uh, but I'm not going to be able to spend a super super long time here tonight. So let's um, let's start knocking down some questions. 